This is the 10%. The sum of the what? The tails. This is what we got here. Total of the tails, 10%. And then I asked you, what percent is not shaded? We said, oh, 100 minus 10, which is what? 90. You guys want to know what that is? That's the confidence level. That's the complement, meaning 1 minus 0 0.10 is 0 0.1. 0 0.90. This is your confidence level. And what is the critical value associated with this particular level of significance or confidence level? Because if you have one, you have the other. What is it going to be? Be careful. What's the definition? It is a what? It's a z value. See, there's a z value. It's a z value associated with the particular level of what? Significance. So it's that z value, meaning, what is it? 1.645. It's the z value associated with this picture. OK? So the reason you need to know this language is because um, they're going to, you know, you're going to be using it. It's going to be written in your questions. Use this particular level of significance to do this. What is this confidence interval? Confidence using this confidence level. So we have to have that language. Uh, well, we'll get, when we get to it. Yeah. OK? Um, so if I had to draw a picture, I would say, ah, uh, guess what? Here is my what? This, this is alpha over 2. What is this? Alpha over 2. This is 1 minus alpha. This is z alpha over 2. This is minus z alpha over 2. So everything that we talked about so far this morning is right here. Alpha, isn't it true if I take half of an apple and another half of an apple? Half of an apple plus another half of an apple? Apple, what does that give me, A? A whole apple. We talked about this morning all of these things. All of those things. That's what we talked about. OK? So now, I mean, some people could just give you all of this and then start to explain it. I just said, you know what? Let's just use our intuition. And what did you guys notice? What did you guys tell me about, about doing this earlier? You said it was all what? Easy, because you're using your intuition. You're determining that shaded area. Go, oh, add. Oh, subtract. Oh, divide. Yeah, all of those things are what you do to answer these questions. So now that you know what those values are, um, the idea is that you use them. Okay. So, so let's just summarize here. Let's write a summary. I want to write a summary here. Um, I can give you alpha, I can give you 1 minus alpha, and I can give you z alpha over 2. I'm asking you guys this question. If alpha is 10%, 5%, 1%, if 1 minus alpha is 98%, 1 minus alpha, the confidence level is 94%, and I'll say, what about if it's 96%? I want you to fill in the blanks, meaning that the first column of information is the level of significance. What's the second column? Confidence what? Level. And then the last one? Critical value.
What was this? How do you guys know? Well, I think we did it all, didn't we? Ninety percent. What was the critical value associated with that? One point what? Six four five. Okay. What's the next one? Ninety-five percent. What's the z value? How do we? What? How can we do this so fast? Because we already did it. What's the uh, confidence level? What's the z value? 2.575. Oh, what if they gave me a confidence level of 98? How in the world am I going to get the alpha? 2%? How did you know that? If this is 98, alpha is the sum of the tails, half of which is in each. So alpha is 2%. Divide by 2, and you get what? Or no, the alpha is 2%. What's the critical value associated with this alpha? 2.33. And how, again, how do we know? Because we did it. If the confidence level is 94%, what's alpha? OK. What's the critical value? If the confidence level is 96%, what's alpha? 4%. What's the critical value? Uh-oh, how do we do that? How do we do that? You guys want to tell me how you do that? Isn't that your picture? What are we saying? We're saying what? That this is 96%. Isn't that right? At this point, Claudia, remember? If this is 96% that's not shaded, how much is here? 48%. Good. What do you guys look for in your Z table? 0. 0.4800. So you get as close as you can to 0. 0.4800. What do you get? 2.5. 2. Point what? It, yeah, it can. But what's closest? Oh, yeah. 2.05. Be careful. 0.5. 2.05. How come it's 0. 0.05? Because that column, see the column? Be careful. It all has a zero in front. You're fine tuning. OK? Be careful. So you guys OK with this? All right, here we go. This is all the information that we're going to use, sort of, for the remainder of the course. Well, I wanted to go through it, talk about it. We have. Now you guys have to use it. But here's the thing, if you're not going to practice it, it isn't going to happen. And that's OK. And we'll just all come back next semester. It's all right. All right, here we go. You guys ready? This is the deal. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk about estimation. We're going to estimate a proportion. Okay. And in fact, in general, we're going to estimate, we, we actually estimate what's called population parameters. And the parameters that exist in statistics, when we talk about a population parameter, we're talking about a proportion. We're talking about a mean, mu, a variance, a standard deviation. These are all your population parameters. Now, you may sit there and say, well, what in the world is that? Well, if you take a population, if you want to describe something about that population, the only way we can do that is to really describe it in terms of these parameters. Percent. What percent of students wear glasses? 
What percent of students are female? What percent of students smoke? What percent of students smoke or female and wear glasses? Okay, so if we're going to describe a population, and it doesn't have to be students, it could be people living in LA, it could be people living in California, the United States, any, any, any population that you define. Population is just a set of things, okay? So we can describe that set with a, with a proportion. We can even take the mean. What's the average age of a student? What's the average age of a female student? What's the average age of a female student who smokes? What's the variance? What's the what? Standard deviation. Okay. So we can describe a population via these parameters. The only problem is a population can be huge. And what happens is that it can be very um, expensive can be very expensive to do and time consuming, meaning that if you had to pay somebody to gather information and to summarize the information about a particular population, if you had to go do that, that's going to take some time. You got to pay them, so that's going to be what? Expensive. Remember, a population can be huge. So instead of doing it for the population, what can be done is you take what's known as a what? Sample. And the, sap excuse me, and the sample has to be random. OK? So fine, if we're going to describe the population by taking a sample, this is a subset of the original set. OK? So if we said students, maybe we take, you know, Mr. Judge's class. That's a subset of the population, or anybody's class, or just randomly select students. OK, so you have a population parameter, and we have what's known as sample parameters. Our parameter is based on the sample. And I'll call it p hat, I'll call it x hat, s squared, and s. What do you think p hat is? Well, I'll give you a hint. What do you think x hat is? This was what? The sample mean. Good. What is s squared? Sample what? Variance. Good. What is s? Sample standard deviation. What's p hat? Sample proportion. Exactly. OK, so this is also known as the true proportion. OK, this is also known as the true mean or population mean. The true variance and the true standard deviation. So what's happening is we're going to take a sample, gather information, and what we're going to do is we're going to estimate a true parameter. Okay, and this is done all the time. This is done all the time. For example, 